All right, everybody, my name is George, and this video is going to be an instructional video on how to take a computer like this uh, with some beer, some Linux knowledge, and build a dedicated Steam OS-like experience with Intel's Clear Linux, which is a distribution you might have heard of. So first things first, find yourself a machine and buy it for however much. I've got this machine at a university for like 100 bucks, slapped an RX 580 in it, and a new power supply. Um, and then you get nice things with these older machines where it thinks that there's no fan installed because you replaced it with an aftermarket one. So ignore that for now. So one of the things I've, I've really enjoyed using SteamOS back in the day and Ubuntu and things like that. But um, as I started to use AMD cards more and more, um, it really became necessary to have newer kernels and newer Mesa stacks. And having a rolling distro like Clear Linux really uh, helps me out in this regard, mostly because it's automatic and in the background there's no PPAs to add. Um, I don't have to go in after the fact and configure things to auto configure. Um, and there's a bunch of stuff that the Clear Linux folks do in the background on the server side to ensure that upgrades and stuff are always delivered and solid so I don't get an issue of a broken package manager. So in this case, um, I've got my controller here. And when you turn it on, you should see the little pop-up. This is an old plasma TV, so if it looks weird, refresh rate-wise, I apologize. But just to prove to you it works, I'm going to launch uh, Witcher 3 here. This is running uh, via Proton, uh, aka Steam Play. Um, and it is the beginning of February, so the kernels 4.2.0.7, I want to say. Um, we'll get into that in a little bit. But I just kind of wanted to show you what the experience looks like. You boot up, there's no keyboard or anything, and the OS kind of does stuff for you. Um, so if you've got a machine that doesn't have a press enter when you boot on it problem, um, generally speaking, it's a console-like experience, and that's what I'm looking for. Also, as I keep, as you keep reading about new features and stuff landing in Mesa, so if you've got maybe a FreeSync monitor or FreeSync TV and stuff, it's really nice to be able to know that your distro is just handling that in the background and you get it automatically. And because it's basically only job is to run Steam, I don't have a lot of packages or anything installed. So there's less things to break. It's really like kind of stripped down. And I've been really been impressed with Clear, not just as a work machine because of containers and all the cool server stuff it comes with, um, but as a client system. So there's Witcher 3 working. Kind of show you how that works. And then let's cut over. We're going to SSH into this bad boy and show you how to set this up yourself. All right, so let's get started. I'm going to try to do this in one take. Um, yes, this is my Windows machine. If you don't like that, you will get over it. So I picked up this guy right here. This is the uh, Hades Canyon Intel NUC. Um, and my goal with it is to basically have a console that I could take anywhere with me um, with just my controller and the power brick, which is about the size of the NUC itself. Um, so when I had this spare machine, I was like, you know what? It, it would be good to kind of experiment with this and figure it out before I mess with this guy. Um, so this is a great little box. Um, the power for the size is just pretty unbeatable. So that's going to be my end goal. So I was messing with this. Like I said, I picked this computer up used for about 100 bucks from the university. Uh, slapped a RX 580 in it. And I kind of wanted to st simulate a SteamOS experience. Uh, hasn't been updated in a while. Even then, the beta is like a little bit old. Like you can't really use Proton. It, it's, it's fallen behind as far as drivers. Uh, and I figured if I was going to have an AMD card, everything's open. Why not uh, use the latest and greatest and just figure it out? Um, so some of this stuff, if you're, if you're familiar with Linux, it should be relatively straightforward for you, this stuff I'm going to show you. If you're not, if you just want a cool... Um, Computer hooked up to your TV with a controller and no mess. Um, I highly recommend this. This is Shadow Apex's SteamOS Ubuntu repo. This will take an Ubuntu machine. You, you clone this script, you run it, and it will transform it into a SteamOS machine, basically, except using the kernel and tools and stuff from Ubuntu, which is really nice. Uh, there's a command that says reboot to desktop mode. It'll reboot to desktop mode. But when your friends come over, you give them a controller. Um, they have no idea that you're using Linux because they're just playing on Steam. And then... Um, it's it's really nice. They do a really good job with this script. Um, there's one thing I don't like is I believe now by default it installs PPAs. 
I don't like that. Uh, I'd rather that be opt-in. But, hey, his script, he's doing a great uh, service for the community. So, plus one to that. So, I wanted, I wanted to re So I do actually run this on my product. Yes, I have a production game machine and I have development game machines because I'm just a dork. But... Um, Day to day, this is this is my gaming machine. On the weekends, I don't feel like working on anything. I just turn it on, I turn the controller on, and I play Witcher or whatever it is I'm into. Um, but for this, I wanted to use Clear Linux. Now, I'm I don't want to talk too much about Clear Linux. Uh, just read up on Pharonix if you want to know about Clear Linux. But one of the things I like about it is, for gaming, it's a non-obvious gaming choice. Right now, usually when you read about it, you're like, oh, of course it is. It's highly optimized. You do kernel stuff and. The glibc is like some crazy new version that's like being used way earlier than other major distros and stuff. All that stuff is fine, um, but it's not like you're going to load clear on a machine and be like, oh my god, I can totally tell the difference between that and another Linux. So uh, the reason that clear is so good is one of their major use cases is IoT devices and things like that and container hosts and containers. So in a way, it's very much like we're going to update shit for you and then you're just not going to care, right? Some... Some pile of machines somewhere is running all the tests and everything so that when I got a package, you know, it's, I know it works. I don't have a broken package manager or any of that stuff. So it's very, I don't mean, atomic is kind of the wrong word, but it's very like, you're going to get updates in the background. Your shit will always be up to date. You don't have to mess with it. So Etsy comes empty, like by default, there's nothing in there. You're kind of given a good template. My plan was, hey, if I can, um, just install Steam on this, and that's all it can do. I've got a nice slim um, OS. So some of the stuff I'm gonna show you here, um, I don't really want to go into uh, all, you know, teaching you how to use clear Linux, because you're gonna have to figure that out on your own. It's, it's not that bad if you've used Linux. The only thing you need to remember, the, the, the major thing, well, I should turn that down, that's annoying, um, is that the package manager, uh, Swap D, I guess it's called, I hung out with some, Clear Linux folks at KubeCon, and they kind of gave me some cool tips on how to pronounce things and stuff. And as you can see, I've, it already has an update. So this thing will update four or five uh, times in the background. You get Delta updates. Um, they've kind of happened transparently. Um, you can, for those of you that get all crazy and all 1990s Windows guys on me, uh, yes, you can, you know, do a sys system control command to turn that off. So uh, just gonna give you an idea of what it takes like to update. Now, one of the things I was concerned about initially is if I have oh, my OS updating in the background and I'm playing a video game and five minutes after I've booted the machine, you, I'm not gonna get a bunch of stutter or any of that stuff. I haven't really experienced that yet. This, this machine, the hardware isn't great. Um, it's like an older i7, I wanna say it's a 6700 uh, SSD boot drive, but then I have a spinning disk for um, for my Steam library and my Optane drive hasn't really gotten here yet. So I plan to bcache the whole thing. I'll make a whole video about all that later. So see, even though I haven't really booted this machine up long enough for it to be updated, it takes like a minute in the background and then it does a bunch of stuff. One of the things I also like is since a video game machine, you turn it on and use it, you turn it off. Um, when I get new kernels and stuff, I don't have to worry, see how these services that updated them even though they're running. So, you know, being able to shut off the machine and turn it back on kind of gives you a clean boot all the time. Um, so let's clear that up and let's let's get to work. Okay, so what do you need to make a video game machine out of the Linux box? You need to log in, right? You need something to basically launch Steam um, and then you need something to ensure that when you launch the games, they launch in full screen mode and you need a working controller, right? Sorry about the dogs. So let's look at auto login first. So this is custom.com, it's an etcd slash gdm. Very simple, automatic login enable equals true, automatic login equals George. And this will ensure that gdm logs you in to whatever session you logged in last. This is one of the last things you're gonna do. In fact, don't even connect the thing up to your television. If you have, get a monitor and a keyboard and a mouse, um, install clear and then if you can, uh, if, it, if it's feasible for you actually, install open SSH on it and then go back to your normal desk or whatever your laptop is and then uh, do all your work remotely. Because it's really nice to sit there, do stuff, reboot it, look over your TV, it reboots, and then you're like, continue on. Um, so that's that's pretty handy. So do this last. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna log in and it's gonna log in a session. So what session are you gonna do? You're gonna make one of these user share X sessions 
And in here, you're gonna make one called SteamOS Desktop. Now I stole this ish from uh, a Steam machine if you have a SteamOS install, or you can look at the script that I, I pointed at. He's included and uh, has links to like where all the devs are and stuff like that. So I went in and I grabbed and I, I figured out stuff. Um, so what this does is if you're familiar with GDM, this will take um, that little gear where you click and it says, you know, log into Ubuntu, log into Ubuntu with Wayland. You know, if you're a KDE distro, it'll say KDE or whatever. This gives you another little entry to the gear. And what this is, is this dot desktop entry will say, we're gonna run a thing called user bin steam dash OS session or steam OS dash session, right? So that's what does that. Um, pretty easy stuff. You can search for this. It's pretty understood how to add sessions uh, to GDM. This probably works for like DM, but I don't know. So let's look in user bin. And we are looking for a file called SteamOS session. Here it is. Now, blatantly stolen again uh, from, Ste from SteamOS here. I made, I made a few changes here. So first of all, this set mode thing, I wasn't able to get to work. So I commented it out. I wasn't able to get lib mode switch inhibitor to work. More on that later. Um, and then this kind of came uh, stock with the uh, script itself, you know, turn off DPMS so like the screen doesn't shut off for you because you don't want that on a TV. Um, and then I actually added this line right here, the Start Pulse Audio X11. So in the, in the, in the first script that I got, um, it launches Steam Comp Manager, which is the, the Steam like window manager thing that just launches Steam and then there's no like window bracket on it. Like, you know, when you go into your desktop and it loads a panel and a menus, this just loads Steam in big picture mode. And then like, that's it. You don't actually, it doesn't run Steam in big picture mode. This does this later, as you can see here. Um, but what this does is kind of prep for that to happen. The Start Pulse Audio X11, I had to add by hand because because I didn't have any session stuff. Like normally when you run a, a desktop environment, it loads like the music thing in the background, the thing that does your keyboard shortcuts, a whole bunch of session-y crap. Um, I don't really know how any of that works. Like I haven't looked at Dbus in like 10 years or whatever. Um, so I knew I needed to have sound. I didn't have sound. So I was like, I wonder if I just add Start Pulse Audio X11 here. And then I added a Sleep 5. Um, you know, to give it time to start, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> uh, but that worked, so, you know, I'm cool. Then, this last command here. So, clear does not come with Steam. You can't, like, in Ubuntu, you can just apt install Steam. But it does come with Flatpak and Flathub configured out of the box. So, uh, after you done install it, you do it on desktop mode. Uh, you're going to either look, run GNOME software or you're going to Flatpak install via the CLI steam um and then you're gonna run it i highly actually you have to do this after you've installed steam run steam normally like in the desktop mode before you before you make any of this uh and you're gonna want to turn on proton which is steam play and basically set all the settings the way you want because kind of once you put it in this steam mode um it's very difficult to get back to a desktop uh with the way that i have it and i'll there's some limitations that i i ran into here and then what we're doing here, so it's basically start the Steam Comp Manager, start the audio daemon, and then run Steam in 10 foot Steam OS mode, enable remote control, some API thing. I don't know. It's it's included like in every thing, so I just left it in there. And then that's it. So now when you boot up the machine, GDM will log you in and then it'll launch this, and then that's what causes when you see the big Steam bubble, bubble splash screen. That's what that's what that does there. That is 90% of it. So the other good stuff is um, controller stuff, which I think I put, where the hell did I put the, where the hell did I put the controller stuff? It's in, I think, user, where are the UDEV rules at? Anybody, anybody? Uh, here you go. Something like that. Yeah, here it is. So uh, Etsy does come empty on uh, clear. So what you do is you either mess with the stuff in user lib, but that's distro land. I don't touch that. So anything that I do custom, I stick in Etsy myself. Um, let's look at here. 
and I didn't do that this time. Did I YOLO this one? I think I YOLO'd this one. Anyway, that's where it's supposed to go, and I didn't do that. This is supposed to be the distro stuff, so that's something I should fix. Yeah. So if you go to Valve, um, if you go to Valve's GitHub repo, you can actually see they do publish their UDEV rules pretty regularly. Um, this is the Steam Dash Devices package in Ubuntu. So uh, stuck that in there, plugged the dongle in, um, and I needed to make sure that uh, dev u slash dev slash u input existed in clear, uh, which is pretty straightforward. I think I installed the package, but I think I'm going to file an issue with them to um, to add that to the games package. Maybe maybe game pads or something should uh, should work out of box. I don't know. I should talk to Ike or something. So that's pretty much it. Uh, like I said, the machine, you just turn it on, it boots up uh, into, into Steam, and that's it. There's one issue. So in big picture mode, uh, the power button and things, so you can go shut down or reboot the machine. That doesn't work, um, and I'm pretty sure it's because of login dot, login.d.conf. Um, because it's not a traditional distro, it doesn't come with like all the stuff that a lot of distros come. So I'm pretty sure there's like some kind of, like I said, I don't know shit about debug sessions and desktops and stuff anymore. I kind of jettisoned all that. Um, so there's no really way for you to power off the machine with a controller and stuff like that. It's kind of a console, so I just hit the power button for now. Like I said, this is my travel machine, so it's like sitting right next to me. Anyway, but it would be nice if someone knows how to figure that out. Um, so it's it's... It's really good. You always get the latest kernel. Uh, like I said, let's, let's show you here. And the uh, updating in the background is really nice. Uh, just because it says Intel Clear Linux doesn't mean it doesn't work with Radeon cards. Uh, it actually works very well. All the drivers are open. The kernel's open. You know, other than the Steam and the games, everything is open. And when you, it's really nice just when you read something on Pharonix or gaming on Linux or something, you're like, huh, do I have that? Oh, shit, I've had it for two days. Um, so that's that's really nice, especially with Proton and things. Those are moving really, really, really quick. Um, like I said, if you don't know what you're doing, stick with 1810 or like Ubuntu 1810 or something. It's not that old, right? I mean, like I said, you're not going to sit there and go, oh, my God, it's night and day, you know, unless it's a specific bug or a specific game. Sometimes that helps. But this is just a really great way to have a machine that's zero maintenance for now. Um, it hasn't broken for me yet. Um, and I don't think it will as long, you know, as long as they don't change the way Steam kind of launches sessions and, and all that kind of stuff. So um, it's just a really good way to have a machine that's updated in the background. It's pretty nice. There are some gotchas. Um, and, but it, it is nice to get that SteamOS experience with the, with the low maintenance stuff. So I hope this has been useful for you. And I will continue to keep working on this. Like I said, I've got a small stick of Optane coming to pair with that drive. Um, Linux isn't Windows, so I don't need some Intel closed driver. I could just use the kernel's built-in bcache stuff uh, with an Optane stick and a drive and kind of get a nice hybrid drive going. I've got that on my other machine. And once you go, once you go hybrid, there's really no going back to just a spinning Rust disk because um, it can get frustrating at times to... To wait for things to load. So with that, I'll, I'll try to keep you all updated. I hope you enjoyed this video and keep on experimenting everyone. Thanks.